So uh, before we go into uh, more detail about the architecture of Sengim and how it's very, it will help you get a simplified uh, OpenStack uh, cluster to use, uh, these are the main goals of uh, the Sengim project. First is to get uh, low entry barrier so that anyone can get up and ready running an OpenStack cluster, uh, get a human friendly interface still in the same, uh, the same world. Uh, we use a lightweight arch architecture and we are able to uh, easily uh, deploy on a single node or, and scale up to uh, way more nodes uh, depending on your needs. It's a fully productized solution, so we actually contributed the project upstream into uh, Open Cloud Foundation, but we built, we built products around it. It's fully open source. It's designed to work at any scale. As I said previously, you can uh, build a single node uh, for your use case, and you can really scale up to hundreds of nodes uh, depending on the uh, deployment method you want. Uh, it's a cloud native infrastructure. All the uh, different services are uh, built from the ground up to be used either inside Kubernetes or with the different machine you use for the hypervisors. It's decoupled from the US. Every application you run with the standard cluster is in a container. I even the compute is running inside a container. The upgrade experience is uh, fully automatic and uh, really easy to get on. It, you Basically, you just have to update the containers and run the migration, so uh, everything has been simplified uh, down to the core. And in the future, what we uh, strive for is to get fully autonomous, so uh, no downtime and uh, automatic repair self-filling, everything done for you. Before going deeper into the details, uh, today we will talk about uh, bare metal automation and uh, the different framework used to do that. The first one is MAS, Metal as a Service. Uh, that is something that can, you can deploy in your home lab or in your data center to uh, commission machines. So you get uh, all your uh, physical machines that you can commission into this tool, and it will manage them for you. Uh, and secondly, we use Juju to automate software. So Juju is another tool that you can deploy, but Juju uh, Sunbeam will do it for you, or you can do it yourself depending on your needs. And uh, Juju is really meant to uh, get applications to talk each other, to be able to understand each other how to work, so you can have a fully automatic cloud. Uh, as I said, everything is containerized, so for the different services that we need to require ac uh, yes, uh, access to the hardware, so you can think about the compute, you can think about uh, the uh, oven agent, uh, it's bundled into a SPAP, which is the container running on, on the uh, hypervisors. And for everything else, uh, it's actually run inside Kubernetes, so uh, Keystone, Nova, uh, Glance. Now you can see about uh, what are the different services that will make up a certain cluster. So on the left, you can see uh, what is uh, about the, the cloud management and governance. So Mass and Sunbeam, as we talked previously, uh, our simple snaps you can install to uh, manage your, your cloud, but what you want to get to is the OpenStack snap that will actually do everything for you. You just have to say what you want. Uh, the uh, control plane, so every service, such as, as I said, like dashboard with Horizon at the moment, Glance, Keystone, MySQL, everything is run inside the MicroKent uh, uh, cluster. Uh, and for the machines, so for the data pane, uh, what you, the two snaps that you will use are Microsoft, that is actually running all the Microsoft services for you and managing them for you. So the Ceph mod and the Ceph OSDs and everything, the Radius Gateway also, for example. And the OpenStack hypervisor that will uh, run its own QML and to be able to manage the virtual machines, uh, open the switch or open the this is what a uh, simple setup in mass will look like uh, for a deployment. So in this deployment, uh, what you will need to have is uh, a mass installed uh, and two virtual machines and three physical nodes. But uh, the uh, most, um, the, the least number of nodes you can use with the mass deployment is actually two VMs and one physical node. Uh, well, actually everything works with only VMs, but uh, for uh, clouds you want <laughs> physical machine to run your hypervisors. So the first VM you need is, uh, we call it the controller, uh, that will uh, host the, uh, the controller to actually manage your infrastructure uh, and your services. And we have an infrastructure node that will actually uh, run the state database, so uh, to uh, be able to, uh, to store your configuration and everything. On the physical node, in this example, it's an hyper-converged setup, so you've got uh, 
the freeNodes running all the Kubernetes control plane, they're running all the Microsoft and the hypervisors, but you can actually um, mix up anything, like have only control planes, only hypervisors, as the way you want. In Maz, when you want to configure your different machines to uh, get your setup, it's basically just tagging which machine will do what. So you, you get your hypervisors, for example, and you say, I want you to be uh, a compute node, I want you to be a control node, it's just a tag you apply on the machine. Uh, if you want to enroll different devices, such as the storage devices, into Ceph, you just add the tag Ceph to the, to the device, and it will be pulled in into Microsoft when it's installed on the machine. And the same for the uh, different provider networks, if you want to set them up uh, into Sunbeam, you basically have to take your computer and network interface on the host, and just tag it with the name of the provider network. At the moment, we only support a single provider network, so this is the tag you have to use. But in the future, we plan to be able to support multiple provider networks, so it will just be a matter of setting the right tag on the network interface. Now we get to uh, how does it work inside Sunbeam. So the first step will be to add a mass deployment to Sunbeam. Uh, you will need to supply the name of your deployment. This, this will be uh, critical to identify which machines are part of the deployment. The token and mass URL. A token is just the identification to MAS, uh, and that's it. You can actually add the same MAS multiple times, just with different names, to manage multiple Sunbeam installations inside the same MAS, so inside the same data center. Then you will have to supply information about the networking uh, inside uh, your, uh, your environment. Uh, MAS will has actually a concept called spaces, that is, a way to uh, give a purpose to a set of uh, network uh, addresses. So uh, you can have a management space to uh, be able to uh, just uh, do the administration operation onto the machines, or the storage storage space to make sure uh, to, uh, to have a Microsoft talk on this space and have high speed uh, access to the data, for example. Then, once you have added your deployment and everything is configured in MAS, uh, you can run this command, deployment validate, that will uh, check everything in MAS and see if uh, you are missing some things or if you are in a situation that will be uh, detrimental to the long-term health of the cluster. So for, for example, uh, if you are missing um, one node, you have no control node, this will fail and tell you you have to have control nodes to have a, a working cluster. So uh, don't try to deploy, it will not work. Uh, but for some other kind of checks, uh, you have the warning level, uh, where for example, if the root disk is not like 500 gigabytes, uh, it's a bit less, it will not fail you, but it will warn you uh, that in the long term, this will cause an issue in your deployment and it's not ideal. Then, how do you get to a working cluster? Uh, basically, uh, you run these two commands. First is bootstrap, that will configure and set up the uh, infrastructure machine we talked about, so the user controller, the um, and the uh, state database for the deployment. And then you run deploy. Deploy is actually the long part of the command that will uh, pro provision all the machines, the, the physical machines in MAS, and then set up the different pieces such as the micro gate uh, cluster, uh, microsave, or, uh, and the OpenStack hypervisor, and get you to a state where you have a working OpenStack, just not configured yet, uh, which is uh, the next part. Uh, the configure command that will just uh, allow you to uh, create uh, the new flavors, create uh, a demo user to be able to run the cloud, and it will also configure the hypervisors to uh, pull in the uh, uh, dedicated compute interface for the uh, high network speed between and uh, remote access to the VMs. Sunbeam proposes uh, a lot of optional features because uh, what I showed in the previous slide about the um, the different services, those were the core services that you always get when you get a Sunbeam. So you will get, always get Keystone, Nova, Glunts, and this, and this kind of services, Neutron, for example. But if you want uh, to use more services that uh, exist in the OpenStack community, for example, you want the telemetry stack that is composed of Silometer, NewKey, and AudiH, you can just run Sunbeam Enable Telemetry, and it will configure those services for you. Uh, other services are available, such as uh, Octavia, under the name Load Balancer. Uh, designate with the name DNS. We also uh, 
embark an observability stack that you can either deploy inside your cluster, which is not recommended for our protection grade but, uh, deployment, but in case of single node, you can easily get uh, Grafana, Loki to have uh, log centralization and also alert about uh, the usage of your cloud. But uh, for more production use case, we actually recommend to use the external um, observability stack where you can deploy it somewhere else and then just plug something into it so that you have observability and your cloud uh, separated. Other, other features that you can enable in Sunbeam are um, validation and image, image sync. Our image sync uh, is about uh, getting from a simple stream server images to automatically be downloaded inside uh, Glance. So you can set up your own uh, simple stream server or take one uh, already existing upstream to get updated images into your cloud automatically. Uh, validation is actually Tempest that, is, that will be run in a read-only mode uh, periodically on your uh, cluster so that you can get alerts when some services uh, are, are either, either too slow or, um, or are just not working. It's uh, like a continuous validation of your cloud. <coughs> Uh, but you can also, uh, through other commands, run a more dedicated test that will actually create uh, instances that will uh, create networks and verify that everything is working as expected in your cloud. Other services that you can see, it's secret, you get a Barbican uh, enabled in the cluster, and CAS. CAS will actually deploy Magnum inside the cluster so that you can easily spawn case cluster on demand inside your OpenStack cloud. So here I have a, a small demo of the, of the different commands uh, run on the uh, run around uh, on the, onto a, onto a, your mass installation. So uh, it's actually sped up to uh, simplify um, uh, the, the, the for the demo purposes. Um, so what you see first is uh, we run the bootstrap command uh, that is. As I said before, this uh, will uh, set up uh, the infrastructure nodes and the uh, controller nodes. And then, Sunbeam deploy, which is the long part of the, <laughs> of the deployment, that will actually so deploy uh, the machine, so if it will provision them, it will deploy MacroCate, Microsoft, the uh, control pane onto MacroCate, and then the hypervisor. At the end of the deployment, is if everything goes all right, uh, you will get a nice message telling you, yeah, you got uh, three nodes in your cluster that have and, uh, each of uh, these roles. At the end, we will run a Sunbeam configure that will... Um, <laughs> but at the end, we just run Sunbeam configure that will just configure the hypervisor to use the right network interfaces and uh, uh, configure the cloud for the usage. Then uh, we actually have a simplified command uh, called Sunbeam Launch that will uh, spawn up uh, uh, a VM into your cloud and uh, plug uh, a floating AP so that you can easily uh, try things out. But at the end of the day, it stays on the Pesta cloud and you are actually encouraged to use the OpenStack SDKs or your different applications that can use it to uh, use the cloud. So here, okay, so uh, I have the configure in this video. So uh, the first step will be to uh, actually, uh, you will get uh, the information to connect to your cloud. And at the end, you can see applying hypervisor settings. So on this, we are just configuring the hypervisor to use the right uh, network interfaces. At the end, I just launch an instance. So at the end, I'm launching an instance. 